This is Fox 24 News at 9. Your life, your news. President Trump took his first steps to dismantle Obamacare today, and it could have serious implications here in Northwest Arkansas. Good evening. I'm Hillary Hunt. Fox 24's Chelsea Brown shows us how one local clinic is prepared for whatever those changes bring. Chelsea. Thank you, Chelsea. It could be even harder to sign up for Obamacare this fall. That's according to a new report from the Kaiser Family Foundation, a nonpartisan research organization. The Trump administration announced in late August that it would reduce their funding by 41%. The Trump administration is also slashing advertising by 90%. Arkansas has a new task force charged with fighting that opioid epidemic. One of those group's goals is to make the drug nioxalone more widely available to police officers and firefighters. But that presents some new challenges. Fox 24's Denny Camper introduces us to a Northwest Arkansas man on the force and his attempt to tackle the opioid problem. New details tonight. More arrests involving the Charlottesville rally are still being made even months after that incident happened. Fox 24's Jonathan Roselle shows us the details surrounding one Arkansas man who's in police custody for his part in beating a man during that rally. It's a bizarre story out of Carroll County. A man has been arrested after reportedly throwing feces at police officers. 44-year-old Eugene Walden, you see right there, called police to a car accident, then led them on a three-mile chase. He stopped, asked officers if he could go to the bathroom. Then he tried throwing his feces at the officer. After that arrest, police found marijuana and a handgun in Walden's car. He's facing multiple charges. Springdale Police has a brand new vest for its newest canine officer. The canine officer you see on your screen, Nomos, got his new protective vest following a contribution from Joanne Moreland. The Master Sergeant stripes that you see on his side were added to honor Moreland's deceased husband, Master Sergeant Farrell Moreland. In the River Valley, federal courthouses in the area are beefing up security to keep employees and the community safe. Fox 24's Haley Huey shows us why taxpayer dollars are being spent on the extra protection. Three local officials have filed an appeal after being denied immunity in a lawsuit filed by the Duggar family. Major Rick Hoyt of the Washington County Sheriff's Office, former Springdale Police Chief Kathy O'Kelly, and Springdale City Attorney Ernest Kate all filed the appeal to the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Four members of the Duggar family filed the original lawsuit in May targeting the city of Springdale. In the lawsuit, the Duggars claim police violated their privacy when documents from an interview that recounts sexual abuse involving their older brother was released to In Touch Weekly. You can find out more about that lawsuit and the appeal on our website, fox24news.tv. The University of Arkansas endowment has reached a record high, crossing the $1 billion mark for the first time ever. Investment returns and $120 million from the Walton Family Charitable Support Foundation pushed the holding just over that marker. Chancellor Joseph Steinman says the endowment is a perpetual source of income for scholarships, faculty chairs, and academic programs. $1 billion was the goal of that original campaign, Arkansas, the primary fundraising program program for the U of A. New tonight, Northwest Arkansas Regional Airport is billing United Airlines for not reporting some of its data to the airport. Airlines are required to report the number of passengers leaving an airport on their plane. And according to XNA, United Airlines incorrectly reported those for the last two years. The director of XNA says this is a rare thing to happen, but the airport has already taken steps to fix the issue. I've been doing this for 31 years, never has never seen an underreporting before, but uh, now that we know that it's a possibility, we've put, we put practices in place to make sure that this does not happen to us again. Johnson says the airline owes XNA about $175,000. Other airlines that use XNA will also get credits reimbursed for flights affected by those discrepancies. One Springdale woman is sharing how the shooting in Vegas has completely changed her family's life here in Northwest Arkansas. Fox 24's Haley Huey is live in studio with an exclusive story you will only see here on Fox 24. Haley. Former U of A student athlete and Olympic gold medalist Sandy Morris was actually in Las Vegas as that shooting took place. She and her boyfriend were just across the street at a Blue Man Group show at the Luxor Hotel on the Strip. The arena was placed on lockdown until 5 in the morning. She says once she was released, the town was nothing like she'd ever seen before. So we walked back and 
it was a ghost town. It was creepy. It was, um, you know, the lights and stuff are still flashing and the streets look beautiful and there's no people. It's dead silent. Morris is back at home and she says she feels lucky that she wasn't affected firsthand and sends her thoughts and prayers to the victims and their families. Police say the gunman was shooting from the 32nd floor of this hotel, the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Across the street is the stage where Jason Aldean is said to have just started performing when those first shots rang out. Many concert goers told police they weren't sure at that point where the shooter was. They didn't know whether to take shelter or run. To give you an idea of just how far away that is from the hotel to the Route 91 Harvest venue, it's about a quarter of a mile from that hotel. The Walmart Amp is an open-air music venue here in northwest Arkansas, and folks with the Amp say they've taken security very seriously to make sure the venue is safe for patrons and performers. They're constantly evaluating and addressing security procedures, and when something like the shooting in Vegas happens, it's another reason for them to see if there's a way to improve. The big thing for us is to keep the line of communications open with the police, um, to really know our plans, and to really look for the best procedures that we can have in place to keep everyone safe. She went on to say that they also work with building owners in the area to keep those lines of communication very open. Security staff also started wanding everyone at the AMP shows this season to make sure they're doing everything they can to keep people safe. Around Arkansas, Governor Asa Hutchinson also issued a statement in response to the shooting overnight, saying in part, It was a senseless, murderous act, and my heart and prayers are with the families as well as the first responders. This tragic incident reinforces and accelerates the necessity of effective security plans at major public events. People are lining up in Las Vegas to donate blood to help those shooting victims. This was the scene earlier today outside the United Blood Bank Services in Las Vegas. As you can see, numerous people lined up to donate. The blood bank actually had to set up a second donation center to accommodate everyone. Early this morning, Las Vegas Police Sheriff Joseph Lombardo urged anyone with the ability to donate blood to do so. You can find a full list of the top 10 deadliest shootings on our website. Be sure to follow our continuing coverage on there as well. That's all at fox24news.tv. Now, if you want to see the latest updates on your news feed, just give us a follow on your favorite social media networks. All you got to do is search Fox 24 News on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. In Arkansas, death row inmate is now a free man. Fox 24's Chelsea Brown joins us live in studio to show us how this happened. Chelsea. We are in the right. And I believe that uh, the, the Rogers should simply accept the situation as it is today. Property owners in the middle of this lawsuit say they're disappointed Rogers is still pursuing their land. Fox 24's Haley Huey shows us why the residents involved say they're not shocked by the lawsuit. Thank you, Haley. In the River Valley, almost 50 people are under arrest in Pope County after a massive drug and gun bust in Russellville. Twelve law enforcement agencies were involved in the operation, including the DEA, U.S. Marshals, and the National Guard. Officers seized over 25 five pounds of meth and almost 70 guns. 47 suspects are now in custody right now. The U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Arkansas says nine of these suspects are members of white supremacist groups and a lot of the drugs and gun transactions were being done with those groups. Anytime you have a white supremacist organization that's involved in violent crime, I mean, it's a, it's a priority for the community and for, for law enforcement. And the more bad guys, the better. And so anytime you have a chance to take down people that are hurting our people and our community, uh, that's a good day. And to give you a rundown on some of these suspects, they range in age from 22 years old to 60 years old with addresses in Russellville, Fort Smith, Dover, Dardanelle, Adkins, and even as far as California. 23 suspects are still on the run. In Springdale, some local groups are calling out Tyson Foods to cut pollution. The group Mighty Earth says that the meat processing business is the biggest contributor to water pollution in the U.S. The coalition wants Tyson to lead the charge for more sustainable practices throughout the industry. A spokesperson for Mighty Earth says that when it comes to less pollution and available food, Americans can have the best of both worlds. 
Everyone deserves clean water, and then it shouldn't come at the expense of having food. Uh, we can have clean water and good food at the same time, and then we're out here showing Tyson Foods that, um, that a lot of people support this cause. Mighty Earth has already given Tyson CEO Tom Hayes a list of ways it thinks the company can limit its water pollution. But a spokesperson for Tyson says Mighty Earth is trying to bend the truth. This group is making some very misleading claims about our company, which is uh, very much committed to continuous environmental improvement. The issue of concerns about crops and pollution is a very complex issue. Tyson released a full statement about the allegations from Mighty Earth. You can find it on our website, fox24news.tv. At Fort Smith, the city's utility department is preparing to replace faulty water meters. Fox 24 told you yesterday that old meters may cause customers' water bills to jump as much as 20%. The American Water Works Association recommends meters be replaced every 10 years. Some in Fort Smith are over twice that age. The department will try and replace all those old meters in the next two weeks. The cost will not be placed on customers, but will be worked into that 2018 budget. At the Capitol today, lawmakers grilled the director of Arkansas prisons for nearly two hours after violent incidents at some of ADC's maximum security units over the last several months. So far this year, Arkansas State Police have opened 42 death investigations, 16 inmates assaults, 28 correctional staff assaults, and 28 contraband investigations. Top prison officials say they need more manpower because they're dealing with hundreds of vacancies statewide. Director Kelly brought up the idea of the state appointing a special prosecutor to handle criminal cases from the ADC instead of local prosecutors tackling those cases. Senator Elliott told Fox 24 she still doesn't understand exactly why this violence is sparking. In D.C. today, the opioid epidemic continues to grow across the United States and lawmakers are making moves to combat the issue. The House Health Subcommittee invited representatives from both parties to speak about legislation plans and ideas to curb prescription drug use. Representative Nancy Pelosi says the fight against opioids is twofold. We must again act urgently and boldly to get America's families the prevention, treatment and recovery resources they need. And in that regard, I said we must work with providers in the pharmaceutical industry to push effective prevention measures so we can reduce unnecessary prescriptions and stop this epidemic at the source. Pelosi says it's also important to protect Medicaid. It's a major source of funding for treatment. Young undocumented immigrants known as Dreamers are also in the center of the debate in Washington this week. Fox 24's Alexandra Lamone is in Washington where House Majority Leader Nancy Pelosi condemned the list of immigration priorities released by the White House. One of Fayetteville's two weekend shooting victims is speaking out and only to Fox 24 News. Two people were shot and injured early Sunday morning after bars and clubs along Fayetteville's Dixon Street were shut down. Good evening, I'm Hillary Hunt. Fox 24 was the first and only station on the scene after those shots rang out. 25-year-old Sebastian Tortola, a former Razorback football player and current Tennessee Titans offensive lineman, was shot along with 22-year-old Alejandro Soto. There are still blood spatters all across the parking lot just outside of Lit Lounge. According to police, the shooting happened after an argument between Tritola and the shooting suspect. The altercation moved into the parking lot, which is owned by the University of Arkansas. That's where police say the shooting took place. Tritola was shot near the ankle, and Soto was shot in the upper leg. In an exclusive interview with Fox 24, Soto says he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I thought like the commotion, you're saying like real quick, just in the corner of my eye. I was paying no mind to it. Next thing you know, it's like, and I guess I saw like a flash or something. I tried to move it out of the way. I felt like I got hit with a beanbag around the back of my leg or something. The officer was saying, if anybody got hit or anybody bleeding, I checked the back of my leg and I saw blood. I was like, I was wondering, this ain't my blood, is it? Soto was released from the hospital and says he has full mobility of his leg and is recovering. As of now, police have no reason to believe that Tritola or Soto knows the shooter and they're working to find the suspect. Numerous people have been interviewed by police, including Tritola and Soto. 
Now, both Soto and Tertola are out of the hospital, and Tertola's former Razorback head coach has spoken out about this weekend's incident. Drew Ammon joining us live from the Pig Trail Nation studio to show us what Coach Brett Bielema had to say. Drew. Sign posted since we've opened at this location um, that there's no firearms on premises. This is definitely not the place for people to bring in firearms, especially because there's alcohol involved. The investigation into Sunday morning shooting is still ongoing. Police have not told Fox 24 whether they believe the shooter had a gun inside Lit Lounge or any other bar, lounge, or club in Fayetteville's entertainment district. Act 562 will also make Arkansas the 11th state to allow public colleges and university students to carry guns on campus. The University of Arkansas is our state's largest public institution, meaning thousands of students between the age of 18 and 22 will soon be able to legally carry a firearm. Coming up in our next half hour in a Fox 24 News special report, we'll take a closer look at the steps the U of A is taking to ensure the safety of its faculty and students. With less than 40 days to go until Act 562 becomes law, we'll show you what's being done to create campus guidelines. It's a story you will only see on Fox 24 News.